Chase Kaiser. I'm here with James Turk, director of Gold Money Foundation. Today we're going to take a look at the history of fiat money, inflation, and economic collapse here in France. We're going to look at two specific episodes, Max, where the currency collapsed twice. Twice. Hard to believe. France's first experiment with fiat money lasted only five years, but it left deep scars. In 1715, Scottish financier John Law found a willing sucker in French regent Philip d'Orléans. Louis XIV, the Sun King's wars and extravagance, had left France heavily in debt. His successor tried in vain to square the budget, but expenses doubled income. Drastic cuts would have to be made unless another solution was found. John Law, heading up the Banque Générale, started issuing banknotes. He said this would guarantee liquidity and increase commerce. The bank invested in some hot properties, including the Mississippi Company, whose shares traded right here on Rue Quincampoix. Shares jumped, as did the value of the banknotes. And then, in 1718, the Banque Générale became the Banque Royale, and they issued even more shares. The economy boomed as paper wealth became widespread. In 1720, John Law was made Minister of Finance. But that same year, the bubble popped. The shares started to fall. Law's solution was to issue more banknotes to attempt to prop up the share price in rapidly increasing amounts. The notes started to trade at a discount to metal money. The government started to panic. They issued more shares and forced the state pension account to buy more shares. That didn't work. People started to hoard more gold and silver. The state went door to door and confiscated it. In just a few short months, the shares and the banknotes, now held by virtually everyone in France and held in all the pension accounts, became worthless. And the entire country went down the drain. Oh, and by the way, if you really wanted to insult somebody, you called them a banker. I'm James Turk. I'm a director of the Gold Money Foundation. And it's my pleasure to be speaking with Pierre Jovanovic, best-selling author and noted historian. I think there's a, a flaw in human nature that we're always thinking that there's a free lunch in this world. And a free lunch comes one way from printing money. But in reality, there is no free lunch. And printing money ultimately leads to a financial or monetary crisis, which is what happened with the Mississippi bubble. Yeah. It ultimately, the stocks, uh, the shares of the Mississippi company rose they eventually collapsed. What were the consequences of that collapse? The, the consequences uh, were tremendous. First, first of all, uh, the French people ne never believed too much in paper. They, 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 they thought it was nonsense, you know, to accept paper instead of, uh, instead of physical gold or, or silver. And then uh, it was there, uh, the, there was a kind of mini revolution started. There was uh, the company, the Mississippi company was Rue Quincampoix in, in Paris. And uh, there were like uh, thousands of people, you know, coming and striking <laughs> just in front. So they wanted their money back. And they were like, uh, I think if it I was remember a one. It was a bank run? Yeah, it was a in bank effect, run. Yeah. So everybody, and the bank run started with the people who were very well informed. It, it started with the, the people around the king, of course, and then uh, progressively, like uh, it took like, like three or four days, you know, to go down, the information went down to the, to the people. So what they were doing is they were trying to take this paper, which is based nothing, <coughs> uh, nothing but promises, to redeem them for actual physical gold and physical silver because the tangible asset ultimately has value and paper is only based on someone's promise. And they were fearful that those promises were worth nothing, and in fact, they were worth nothing. So don't forget, you know, uh, uh, in the beginning, they, they said that uh, the Mississippi was the, the, the like the promise, uh, the promised land. Uh, if I may say that in, in English, so it was filled in, like in some biblical city, you know, or, or 
uh, <coughs> filled with gold mines and uh, uh, and uh, silver mines and uh, uh, apples in gold on trees, <laughs> you know, something like this. So uh, people really fantasized about about it, you know. So everybody wanted the, the shares of this Mississippi company, and to the point that it was such a success uh, that, that John Law issued more action. Of course, M more, more shares, shares yeah. uh, ten uh, available. So, but that's that's a very common uh, that's a very common thing. You know, we, we, we saw that through through history. After the collapse of the Mississippi bubble, um, what was the impact on the French people? Was it throughout the entire country or just within Paris? I know it was uh, it was definitely throughout the the, the whole country because uh, don't don't forget this the law. Uh, who forbade the French people to use gold coins and silver coins were, were, were extremely active. And people all over France were thrown in jail. And at the time, jail was very specific, so it was uh, really a nightmare. Uh, so p people were really scared because uh, everybody w w went nuts. Um, so um, there was just this anger uh, against the politicians. Uh, we, don't, we cannot use this, the term politician because at, at the time it was the aristocracy. The, the, the monarchs. Uh, the, the monarchs monarchy. So, uh, who, who, were, who were there. But the anger of the people w was uh, already there. And this anger uh, is going to be dem demultiplied and uh, which will give not only the French Revolution but also the terror period, you know, three years later when they will take everybody and just send them to the guillotine. So this is uh, it, it's like a maelstrom of um, anger of people who have been stolen from their wealth for, for which they worked all their lives. The country's best minds come here to the assembly to make impassioned speeches, but the crushing debt is a problem. 70 years later, France again turned to paper currency. How could this happen? For a whole year, this debate raged between paper money and hard money. Food prices continued to rise. The guillotine started to work overtime. 